Do you know how many photos I've had to take in order to get the Portofino? The answer is a hundred. One hundred photos of one hundred different cars. Each time that I would start a race, I would open up photo mode and take a picture. And because the race settings that I play on are usually on anything goes, most vehicles in a race are either a Ford Focus RS or an Audi TT, which means I didn't add up the number of different cars that I would have taken photos of quickly. Let's just say it took a little more time to unlock the Portofino than I had originally expected. Today, I want to show you if the Ferrari Portofino is worth the wait and effort. Well, I finally have the Portofino, and I do have to say, it looks way better than its predecessor, which was the Ferrari California. There's just one thing that feels wrong to me, and I can't quite place it. You know, if I were fortunate enough to be able to afford a new Ferrari, I would prefer either the GTC4 Lusso or the all-new Roma. The Roma's MSRP starts at $10,000 above the Portofino, and for that extra 10 grand, I'd rather have the Roma because it has greater tech and just looks a lot better. But I guess if you're into the whole convertible thing, then the Portofino is the right car for you. Thankfully, I was able to swap the factory twin turbocharged V8 for the LaFerrari's hybrid powertrain. And through some upgrades to the Portofino, it now makes 1144 horsepower. Though it has over 1100 horsepower and weighs just about 3000 pounds, the Portofino feels really slow. Yeah, I know it'll do well over 200 miles per hour, but it doesn't feel fast for having 1100 horsepower. It's too bad that I can't put the roof up manually in free roam. Also, the upgraded V12 that I have in the car now sounds just like any other Ferrari generic V12, which I think is a little worse than the Lambo generic V12. So, for that reason, I'm going to go back to the twin turbocharged V8. The car now makes 856 horsepower after I have upgraded the V8 to the maximum. Why don't you all join me for a Forzathon Live? The V8 isn't the greatest sounding, but it's way better than the V12 that I had equipped it a second ago. The car feels fast, and for what it is, it doesn't sound too bad seeing how it has the same Ferrari V8 from the 488 and the Pista. The Portofino is surprisingly fast and it handles really well off-road. It's also the Forzathon car of the week, so if you have 600 Forzathon points lying around, you might want to go pick up the Portofino. I just don't think 600 Forzathon points for this car is worth it. One thing that I find incredibly annoying about the Portofino is when I'm driving in the first person view. When I'm accelerating, there's a portion of the roof just above the windshield that slides down and blocks a good portion of my screen. And then at the top of the screen, there's a ton of blue space taken up by the sky. I wouldn't usually mind this, but at this point, I'm just pointing out the small things that I don't like. The Portofino, all around, is a good car. I like that it's named after a very picturesque village in Italy, and one of the most picturesque villages that I want to visit. It also handles well, it's fairly fast, and it's one of the few convertibles in the game, so you have to give it points for being a convertible. With that being said, if I were you and I haven't taken all of my 100 photos yet, I would definitely recommend taking all the photos you need to in order to get the Portofino. I just wouldn't spend 600 Force Thon points on the car, nor go pick one up in the auction house. To me, it just isn't worth it. The Ferrari Portofino is a cool car and all, but I'd rather go to the auction house and pick up a Ferrari F12 TDF. For that, I think you get a better sounding V12, and you also get a car that looks better, and you get a car that goes faster, and you get a car that handles better. That's the end of the video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Have a nice day.